This video demonstrates how to set up a Silk Performer load testing project that takes full advantage of the Silk Performer cloud-based testing offering, Cloudburst. Cloudburst virtual cloud agents can be distributed to different geographical regions and managed side-by-side -side along your other intranet-based load test agents. Cloud-based agents are easy to deploy, don't require maintenance, and can be easily scaled up based on your testing needs. So let's get started. We'll create a new Silk Performer project of type Web Business Transaction and we'll name the project Cloudburst. The Silk Performer model script dialog box appears ready to record a web application using Internet Explorer. We'll specify that the recorder should open the Borland demonstration server when recording begins. The Borland demonstration server is at demo.borland.com. And then we'll start recording. The recorder appears, as does the demonstration server, loaded in Internet Explorer. Now I'll interact with the demo application, performing typical user actions that will be recorded by Silk Performer and converted into transactions in a test script. We'll save our recorded script with the default name cloudburst.bdf. Now let's run our newly recorded script in a try script run to confirm that it runs without error. We'll do this by clicking the try script button on the workflow bar. And then we click run to begin the try script. As the script runs, TrueLog Explorer opens, displaying detailed information about each step in the test script, along with screen captures of the demo application. Let's take a quick look at the page timings and statistics that Silk Performer captured during the try script run. Detailed statistics and timings like this are captured for each page included in the test. Back in Silk Performer, the try script summary page displays, showing you a quick summary of the most important test statistics. Now let's move on to the next step in the test, user type definition. Click the define user types link. We have one default user type set up by default with the default profile, Profile1, which emulates the Internet Explorer web browser. Let's create another user type with a new user profile that simulates a Firefox web browser user. Now we'll specify that the Firefox user profile should emulate the Firefox web browser. We'll also specify that the bandwidth for this user profile should be Wireless Local Area Network, or Wi-Fi. Now let's create another profile for Google Chrome users. We'll set the bandwidth setting for this profile to Edge. Each of the new profiles we've created equates to a new user type variation. Let's add the new user types to our test workload. To keep things simple, we'll accept the default increasing workload model, which increases users and workload at regular intervals. Now let's tweak the maximum virtual user setting for each user type in this workload. We'll set this up so that there are 50 virtual users total. And now finally, we're ready to assign some cloud-based agents to deliver our workload. Click Use Cloud Agents. Now we'll log into the Cloud Agent Manager. With Silk Performer's Cloudburst software as a service offering, you can run load tests without permanent licenses. You're charged on a per-use basis up to a specified maximum number of concurrent virtual users. The Cloudburst virtual infrastructure is available to you in the form of pre-configured, ready-to-use Silk Performer agents, which can be deployed across multiple geographic regions. If you haven't already registered for a Cloudburst account, you can do that here. Then you can buy Borland credits using your credit card, or you can contact a sales representative for bigger transactions. Here you specify how many virtual users you want to run on each cloud agent. You can use this slider to select the number of virtual users that you want to have run on each cloud agent. 
Markers along the slider indicate the number of virtual users that can typically be supported by cloud-based agents when testing various application types. The higher the maximum virtual users per agent setting, the fewer agent instances required within each geographic region to support the prescribed workload. For our test, we only want to deploy agents to two geographic regions, EU West and US East. Rather than running all 50 virtual users on the EU West cloud agent, let's split the users across both available cloud agents. Click Next. Here you can see that we've got one agent instance in the EU West region and a second agent instance in the US East region. Let's set the uptime setting to expire in three hours. Then click Start to start the agents. It typically takes anywhere from two to five minutes for agents to reach the ready state. Let's click refresh and now we see that both agent instances are running. And now it's time to configure monitoring for the test. Click configure monitoring on the workflow bar. We'll accept the default set of data sources for monitoring. We're almost ready to run our test, but before we do, let's double check the cloud agent assignment on the agent assignment tab. Here you can see the two agents we have set up, one for US East and one for EU West. This all looks fine, so I'll click run to begin the test. And here you see an estimate of the number of prepaid Borland credits that this test will cost based on the number of virtual Cloudburst agents you're using and the number of concurrent virtual users you're running. You can purchase Cloudburst credits using your credit card. Once you've filled your prepaid account with Cloudburst credits, you can use the credit to purchase the virtual infrastructure and or virtual users you need to successfully run your performance tests. In this particular instance, only four credits will be deducted for the virtual infrastructure. The virtual user license fee is already covered because I ran a test earlier today. I'll confirm my approval by clicking Accept and Run. And the test begins. The first thing you'll notice is that Performance Explorer opens and begins monitoring a default set of data sources on the application server. Active users, pages per second, and more. As the test begins executing, you can see that we're starting to pick up some measurements in Performance Explorer. Now our test is complete and the load test summary page loads, showing key metrics captured during the test. From this drop-down list, you can examine the results for each of the user types that were included in the test. And by clicking the View Debit Information link here, I can see details regarding the number of Borland credits that were deducted from my Cloudburst account for this test. Let's explore the results by clicking Explore Results on the workflow bar. This opens up the overview report for the Cloudburst test. This report includes a variety of response time measurements that were captured during the test. Now let's create a region comparison report to see how performance varied across the two geographic regions we selected. I'll right-click the Regions node and select Region Comparison Report. In this report, the EU West Cloud Agent serves as the baseline. Note that the EU East Cloud Agent is shown with a slightly reddened status color, which means that its performance is slightly slower than the EU West Agent. So why would this be? Let's take a look at the ranking section of the report to find out. As you can see, all of the US East response times are slightly slower than those in EU West. This makes sense because the demo application server is in Europe, closer to the EU West agent. There are apparently some network latency issues between the application server and the US East agent. Back in the overview report, you can see that there's an obvious spike in response time here. It probably makes sense to perform root cause analysis on these results to see if we can determine what's caused this spike. To do this, I'll create a new graph that shows only the client-side page times measure. Now I'll highlight the period of time around when the spike occurred. Now with the time period isolated, I'll activate Soap Performer's Find Root Cause feature. And now Performance Explorer is crunching the data, looking for correlations between the page times measure we selected and all the other available measures. And here's the correlation report. 
Notice that all included measures show a significant spike in response time at the same moment on the timeline. But let's clean this up a bit by removing some of the redundant measures. And now we begin to see something interesting. Three of the measures relate to the Silk Performer test site page request. Without our having any server-side performance metrics to compare here, it's not possible for us to say conclusively what caused the spike. There was either an issue with the application server at this point in time, or the spike was caused by server latency related to the geographically based agents. Either way, we're on our way to identifying the root cause of this performance issue. But more research needs to be performed before we can say conclusively what happened here. I'm going to delete all measures except for the original overall page response time measure and the silk performer test site measure, which has the most pronounced corresponding spike. And now, just out of curiosity, I want to see if there's a significant difference at this point in the timeline between the server busy time measurement taken from the EU West Cloud agent, and there's definitely a pronounced spike here in response time. Now let's compare the US East agent. The spike here is much less pronounced. This is just one example of how you might go about performing root cause analysis on your own test results. Thanks for watching.